everyone, my name is Ryan Cam, and welcome to my review for Abominable, directed by Jill Colton and starring Chloe Bennett, Albert Tsai, Tenning Norgay Trainer. I butchered that and I'm sorry, and, as well as Eddie Izzard and Sarah Paulson. And this movie is brought to us by the tag team known as DreamWorks and Pearl Animation. It tells the story of Yi, played by Bennett who discovers that a yeti is living on her roof. You know, the huge. But she, along with her two friends, must accompany the yeti back to its home at Mount Everest. But they are being chased by an evil corporation who want to take the yeti and possibly sell it. 2019 has been a very big year for animation. Toy Story 4 is undisputedly the best animated movie of the year, and the Angry Birds movie 2 was surprisingly very good. And Abominable is not that bad either. It's not perfect, it is very cliched, but I walked out of the movie and I enjoyed it. First, let's talk about the animation. The animation in this movie is gorgeous, with just beautiful backgrounds combined with very well-drawn human characters. There wasn't a single instance where I was like, oh, that's clearly a computer. And that is a very massive compliment. This movie has just brilliant uses of color. It just, it just pops on screen and you're just like, wow, why don't movies use color styles like this more often? I also really enjoyed Yi, voiced by Chloe Bennett. I thought she was the most interesting character in the movie. She definitely had the best character arc and she was involved in the best scene in the movie. Let's just say, I think it's one of the, if not the most beautiful usages of the song Fix You by Coldplay used in any movie ever. Like, you can feel free to change my mind if you want, but that's my story and I'm sticking to it. But what I didn't like about this movie was how cliched it was. I felt like I had seen this movie a thousand times, like the plot, I figured it out in about 10 minutes. And like, I, and like I've said in other reviews, I'm not some script writing genius, but I've seen enough of these movies to kind of figure out that two plus two was gonna equal four. There's the loner character with the heart of gold who is friends with the big mouth and, and his little brother. They have to go against an evil corporation who only care about money. You can kind of figure out the rest. It's very much a abstract, quid pro quo, paint-by-numbers type of movie. But I'm still going to give the movie a good rating. I think that this movie definitely has problems, but overall, I still really enjoyed it. It had a lot of heart, it had a great message, it was funny, it was beautiful to look at, it had a compelling main character. Overall, I was very satisfied. I don't think Abominable will be in my top 10 of the year, but I still think that it's definitely worth checking out if you're interested. But that's all for me, guys. Thank you so much, as always, for watching. I'm going to be concluding Stephen King Month with my reviews for 1922 and Gerald's Game. And I'm also going to be kicking off my series of reviews for the month of October, and I cannot wait to get that series started. But for now, my name is Ryan Cam. And I'll see you in the next one.